Hello everyone! Today we are in Abruzzo, one of the greenest regions of Italy. This region, Abruzzo, has very often been defined as the green heart of Europe because it has three national parks and many, many protected areas. One of the hidden gems of Abruzzo is the ancient city of Alba Fucens. Alba Fucens is an ancient Roman city of the 4th century BC and we're going to explore it now. Our first stop will be the amphitheater of the city of Alba Fucens. This is the Roman amphitheater of the ancient city of Alba Fucens. It is an amphitheater in an elliptical shape, which complements so well the natural background with the Velino mountains and its twin peaks. Comparing to other amphitheaters, this amphitheater is not a huge one. If you compare it to the Colosseum, the Colosseum could host up to 50 to 70,000 spectators at one time, while this amphitheater could only host a few thousand. But as the Colosseum, this arena will be used, will be background to gladiator fights, hunting scenes. And this was also a place where people who were condemned to death would have their capital execution. We are on top of a hill because this amphitheater was built by digging the center of a hill. The amphitheater is still used today uh, to host shows. And as we can see, we have a stage and, and some, uh, some modern chairs. Uh, but uh, in, in antiquity, spectators will sit here on those marble seats, on the stone seat, all around the arena. But now let's go down into the arena. It's really steep here, so we need to be careful. As we enter the arena, we realize how this structure was so perfectly made. Our voice echoes back in the whole of the amphitheater, so people from a distance can hear you very sharply and clearly. The history of this amphitheater is a curious one. This was built by one of the citizens of Alba Fucens. You know that uh, Roman cities could not live without an amphitheater. It was a structure that was never missing in a typical Roman city. This one was built by Macrone. Macrone was a citizen of Alba Fucens that made a really good career progression under the emperor Tiberius. But with Tiberius' successor, Caligula, things changed a lot. With Caligula, uh, Macrone had a hard time because Caligula uh, suspected uh, him for conspiracy, so he forced him eventually to commit suicide. But Macrone left on his last will that uh, all this money would go to the city of Alba Fucians to build an amphitheater. And this is what happened. I think one of the coolest thing of these ancient ruins uh, that is also happening in Pompeii and Ostia Antica and other archaeological sites like this is that the ancient structures interact with the modern events. It's just incredible that 2,700 years after the city was founded, this amphitheater is still used to host modern events. We have a little bit of short breath. We went uphill from the amphitheater. We can see from above the ancient city of Alba Fugens, and we are uphill. Usually the location, the most prominent location of the city where uh, temples were uh, located. And this temple that used to be the temple of Apollo became later in time, in the Middle Ages, the church of St. Peter in Alba. Let's go and have a look. So this is the interior of the church of St. Peter in Alba. This used to be the temple of Apollo and we can still see the main chamber of the temple in this this wall, this stone wall here was the, the sacred room of the temple of Apollo where no one could enter apart from the priest and the priesthood. We can see the columns. The columns are the original ones of Alba Fucens. They were reinstated here in the church. And it's not only ancient Romans uh, artifacts in here, there's also Middle Ages artifacts like this Ambone. It was uh, made in the 1200s, so in the Middle Ages by the monks. And this was the place where the monks would read the sacred text. And if we get closer, we can see this uh, really very typical style, the cosmetic style of the 1200s, where uh, materials from the ancient town of uh, Alba Fugens were reused. So these are the colorful marble of the ancient town of Alba Fugens, reused to make this pattern here. And during that time, uh, also clothes were made with those patterns. Same here. This is a, a kind of a fence that was usually put between the altar and the central nave, made with the same style. 
And look at the columns. They look like snakes covered with these colorful marbles. And imagine those columns were stolen in the 90s. And the carabinieri, the police from uh, um, the south of Italy, managed to recover them only a few months ago. And only a few months ago, they were reinstated in the original location. So now we can have a full effect of how this place looked like in the uh, 1200s. So now we are down to the ancient city of Alba Fucians. This is the main uh, road. Alba Fucians was a Roman colony inaugurated in 303 uh, before the birth of Christ. It was a time where Rome was not yet a huge empire as it became later from Scotland to Iraq but it was just a, a republic, a small republic uh, controlling the territories of central Italy. The town of Alba Fucians was not uh, huge, it was a, a very small town but it was a strategic town because this territory was controlled by the Equi uh, and when Rome uh, took control of the area, decided to build a town to control the territory and it sent 6,000 uh, people from Rome to live in this town and to control it and to build infrastructure and to build all the classical uh, buildings uh, that uh, are usually found in a Roman city like a forum, a basilica, a temple, an amphitheater so everything had to be done in Roman style. Ancient city, this archaeological site has been opened uh, about 70 years ago and there's still archaeologists uh, doing the excavation of the site. A big part of the city is still underground so there's so much more to discover and to study. We're now walking towards another main street of the ancient city. This is where we can still see the structures of the ancient shops, which were all facing the street side. But now we're gonna see one of them. Come with me. So here you could find any kind of a shop. Uh, you have to imagine that ancient Romans would leave the house for anything. Apart from sleeping, anything else was made in the city, so outside. And for example, Romans didn't have any kitchen. So when they wanted to have uh, some food, they would come into the Thermopolia, and this is where we are now. This is uh, the desk of the Thermopolia. Basically, the, the servers would be here on this side. This was like a desk, like in a bar or in a restaurant. And if you come with me, usually here they would have huge cauldrons to keep the, war the food warm or to keep the water, to wash the dishes and things that we use to serve food to the, to, to the guests. And here as well, this is one of the uh, little uh, dolium or, or cauldron where they would keep, uh, uh, for example, wine or, or, or other drinks. And usually Thermopolium also had a space for tables because people would eat uh, inside the place. Here we are in Via dei Pilastri, the street of the pilasters, which takes the name from these pilasters behind me. Those pilasters were found by the archaeologists uh, in different pieces, and the archaeologists put them up uh, to show us how the street looked like in antiquity. And there is one curiosity I want to show you in this street. You see the stones here on the ground? Those were ancient zebra crossing. So during days uh, with torrential rains and heavy rains where it was difficult to walk from one side of the street to the other, people would use these stones here. Uh, water would stream through in the middle between the stones and you could walk comfortably from one side to the other. Same function more or less as the modern zebra crossing and this is really something uh, that we find only here in Alba Fucians or in Pompeii. For example, they're not present in Ostia Antica. <laughs> so as we continue walking in the Via of the Pilastri, we, get, uh, we bump into the thermal bath. So we can recognize the thermal bath by this structure. This was the Hypocos system. So basically, they would raise the level of the ground on the floor with uh, piling up on top of, the, of each other the bricks and then they would let uh, the, the hot air stream through so that the floor of this room would become really warm and this is one, uh, this was probably the calidarium, the warmest room of the thermal bath of Alba Fugians. When we visit those places, we always remember of that famous sentence in Latin which says Roma quanta fuit ipse ruina docet which means the grandiosity of Rome 
can be seen from the ruins that are left. I really hope that you enjoyed this little tour of the ancient city of Alba Fushent. If you liked the video, please subscribe and like below and let me know what you think. And if you've ever been here and if this video inspired you to come and visit this place anytime soon. Remember, we also do live virtual tours. You just need to uh, go on our website, livevirtualguide.com. Choose the tour, date and time, and then you can enjoy any live virtual tour from the comfort of your home. I hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching. Ciao.